Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Hi, this is Tim Worth from L'Oreal TV and L'Oreal Radio, here with James Jacob Prash, live from England. Jacob, what is sinless perfectionism, and is there such a thing? Is there such a thing? Yes and no, but let me begin at the beginning. Sinless perfection is something that some people have drawn from a book by John Wesley, A Plain Account of Christian Perfection. There are hyper Arminians and some Wesleyans and some holiness Pentecostals that somehow equate baptism of the Holy Spirit with sinless perfection, that we don't sin anymore. I once knew somebody who was from a very traditional church of the Nazarene, and I had had friends who were Nazarenes, who would pray believing that. And there were meetings where people would say things like, I thank thee, Lord, I haven't sinned in over 40 years. Well, they really believed that. It, it was not really spiritual pride so much as ignorance. So I pressed this friend of mine about this doctrine of sinless perfection that he got into. Well, he was, he was brought up in it. He was born into that particular denomination. And I found out how he got around it. Scripturally, we sin in thought, word, and deed. He simply redefined sin as word and deed, not thought. You know, Jesus said, if you lust after somebody's wife, as far as God's concerned, you committed adultery. You don't actually have to go sleep with somebody's wife to commit adultery. Or if you covet something, if you desire wrongly that which does not belong to you, as far as God's concerned, you stole it. They have to redefine sin to convince themselves that they don't have any. What many of these churches teach is baptism of the Holy Spirit is the mechanism to impart this sinless perfection. Well, Peter was breathed on by Jesus in John 20 and received the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, Peter was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yet we see in Galatians, Paul rebuking Peter in the presence of all for doing something that he should not have that was plainly, plainly wrong in God's sight. Peter didn't have sinless perfection, and either do we. No, it doesn't exist. Yet. Yet. But it will exist when Jesus comes. There are three elements involved in triggering sin. The world, the flesh, and the devil. When Jesus comes, there will only be in the millennial reign the earth. There will not be the world. There will not be the devil who will be bound for a thousand years. So there will be nothing to incite or to tempt the sin. The world, the homotosphere, will not exist. Jesus will rule the nations with the rod of iron. And there will be no tempter. In the millennial reign of Christ, we will have the potential of a sinless perfection for the people of God. And of course, it will exist in eternity. There will be sinless perfection. Right now, there is a quest to attain it, to pick up our crosses and live a crucified life and to fight the temptations of the world and the devil now. But I don't know of anybody who has never sinned, even as a believer. When Paul says, speaking of the law, all wicked man that I am, that which I do not want to do, I do. He was not just speaking of his old nature before he was a Christian. He was speaking of his old nature that he still battles with as a Christian. The way that he and Barnabas fell out over John Mark, that could have been handled better. I'm sure Paul and Barnabas would say right now, we could have handled that better. 
but we're not perfected yet. Now, I'm not necessarily saying it was a sin because it was a difference of opinion, but we all have an old nature. We all have an old nature. Yes, there will be sinless perfection, but we haven't attained it yet. At the same time, at the same time, because of the Holy Spirit, we are empowered to pick up the cross and crucify the flesh. Remember, Christians have a choice. They don't have to sin. Only unsaved people must do it. Because there is no sinless perfection does not mean we give up the battle to attain it. No, we keep fighting the world, the flesh, and the devil until the perfection comes with the return of Jesus. The bride needs to get dressed, needs to get ready. But somebody is literally being tortured and martyred for the name of Jesus, for their faith. When a Christian is giving up their life willingly because of their faith in the Lord Jesus, something happens at that particular point where they're resisting sin, they're not denying him, up to the point of shedding of blood. At that point, as it were, an individual believer can reach at that moment a point of perfection. We're not all martyrs, but we're all called to be ready to be martyrs. Remember, the thing about martyrdom is you die once. But battling the world, the flesh, and the devil, we have to pick up that cross and die every day. That's the answer.